Hello everyone, uh, this is a very small audio clip on lichen sclerosis, uh, how you're going to explain the condition to the patient and how you will discuss the management. Okay, so uh, again, I have tried to keep it as simple as possible and whenever you are explaining the condition, it has to be in a very simple patient-friendly language and you are not going to use any medical jargon and even when, when you are discussing the management, also try to keep it as simple as possible and check the patient's understanding. Always ask in between that, uh, am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? Would you like me to repeat anything? Okay. So regarding the explanation of the condition, you can tell the patient. Um, so Jennifer, from the information which I have gathered and examination, most likely you're having a condition that is like an sclerosis. Have you heard about it? It's a skin condition uh, that affects the vulva and the skin uh, becomes white and thin uh, like in your case and also it can cause severe itching and pain. Exact cause of this condition is not known but it occurs due to a problem in our immune system that is our defense system uh, which uh, produces some uh, proteins uh, which can attack our own body cells. It can affect women of any age but it's more common after menopause. Am I clear so far? So regarding the management, uh, we have uh, the potent cream that is uh, the clobitazole cream. Actually, it's a steroid cream and it's safe to use. It's uh, used uh, for three months. And uh, would you like me to tell in the details about it? Okay, so you will be using it daily for one month and then on alternate days for one month, then twice weekly for one month. And this will help to improve your symptoms. Continue to use for three months, even after your symptoms have gone, otherwise itching and pain can come again. The tube should last for three months, okay? Regarding the follow-up, um, we will be arranging the follow-up visit after three months to see if you're responding to the treatment or not. And I would also like to tell you that 10 in 100 women, they do not respond to treatment. And if that's the case, then uh, we can refer you to the specialist well well clinic and here the specialist doctor will take a skin sample from your vulva and send it for testing and they may change your medication okay depending upon your case also i would like to inform you that there is small risk of uh, this condition progressing to cancer that is sinister changes can occur in four in hundred women with this condition and because of this small risk, uh, we advise you to examine your vulva regularly. And uh, if you notice any changes, like uh, if you notice any lump or any mass, any abnormality, if you have any sort of concern, please inform us immediately or report to your GP. And uh, if everything is fine, then uh, we are going to follow up you yearly uh, after the treatment because symptoms can come back and in that situation, you may need long-term treatment. Am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? And then tell her about the general advice also that uh, Jennifer also, I would like to uh, tell you that please keep the area down below clean. Avoid using soap. You can use soap substitutes. Avoid the douches, deodorants, bubble bath and perfumes and keep the area dry. Okay, and you can uh, wear you uh, loose fitting cotton undergarments instead of the tight fitting ones. And also avoid using any fabric conditioner and uh, washing powders, you know, because they are skin uh, irritants. And when you will avoid using these things, so they will also help to improve your condition. Am I clear so far? Do you have any questions? So Jennifer, I will be giving you the written information leaflet about your condition and the management options and we'll write back to your GP as well, arrange an appointment after about three months and we'll give you the contact numbers for clinical access. Please free, feel free to contact us anytime. All right. Okay. Thank you. I hope this is helpful. I have tried to again keep it as simple as possible because we all know that in the part three exam, we are not going to use medical jargons in the simulated patient task, okay? And uh, just remember about the domains that when you're explaining the condition to the patient, that is the communication with patient, when you're discussing the management, that is your applied clinical knowledge, when you're discussing about the follow-up, 
uh, that is your patient safety okay all right so keep practicing and again i would like to tell that part three exam is about your communication skills and um, uh, that is why it's very important to practice with your study buddy every day try to do at least one or two stations and uh, because you know this will really really help in your communication okay uh, okay thank you so much